Good morning, I hope you're well. So welcome to my brand new series of videos called Rambling Thoughts, where I take a wider perspective on WordPress and the web. Today I'm going to look at the number one problem with page builders and the most popular block libraries, and that is content lock-in. I'm going to explain what content lock-in is and what you can do to mitigate it. One of my first jobs in publishing was for a company called Database Publishing Systems Limited. Look at this view, this is where I live, isn't that beautiful? A bit of snow on the hills today. I'll put a link here to where I live on the map. And we built systems for people like Shell Oil and aerospace companies. And these were technical manuals, manuals where you input the data once and then you output it to multiple media. In those days it was paper, CD-ROM and intranets. And then the internet came along and things changed very quickly. But this key concept was, and the point I'm getting to, is that you create the content once and then you can output it to multiple media. And that key concept also holds within WordPress, which is really cool. It's one of the most powerful things about WordPress, that you can put your content in once and then switch your theme and the content will flow into the new theme. But there are some things themes that lock your content into them so you're stuck with the theme so you need to know about this there are also some plugins that if you change the plugin or, or deactivate the plugin you might lose some content so what I'm going to do I'm going to create some content in the most popular plugins and block libraries deactivate them and see what happens to our content rambling thoughts thinking rambling thoughts thinking running like a devil and they can't be cool oh. right let's start with Divi here we go here's a page that's being imported using Divi standard sort of Divi looking page. What we're going to do is deactivate Divi and come back to this page and see what it looks like. Let's do it here. So let's go and activate a different theme. Let's go to Astra and let's go back to that page and just see what happens to it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, so here we go. Can you see how all that we've lost basically everything? So what happens is we've just we're left with basically just a whole bunch of Divi short codes, which is obviously kind of a disaster. So if you do want to move from Divi, I've actually done a tutorial on how to move uh, from Divi to Gutenberg, step-by-step uh, -step how to get through it. There is actually a, a plugin you can use to clean out all these shortcodes, but obviously it's a major problem with Divi. Let's move on to the next one. Right, next up is Elementor. So same thing, I've got an Elementor built page here. I'm gonna go and deactivate the plugin and see what we're left with. So let's go plugins. Let's find the Elementor plugin down here, deactivate it. And then let's go back in the page and see what we're left with with Elementor. And we're a bit stuck again. So we've got some content, which is one step better than Divi, I'd say. So kind of we can see stuff, which is great. We haven't got short codes, but we've lost all our formatting. So the formatting is completely gone, which is kind of what you'd expect when you're not using the plugin. Obviously, it's a serious problem if you've built hundreds of pages with Elementor and then you want to move to something like Gutenberg. Next up is Avada or Aveda. Never know how to pronounce it. Here we go. Here's the page that I've imported. Looks pretty cool. Here's the back end, just so you can see the back end. I haven't seen Avada for a while, so this is the back end. It's pretty, it's pretty tough. Right, but let's go and deactivate the plugins because there's a few plugins that this actually uses and there's a theme. So we need to go and deactivate two plugins, I think, probably, which is these two, the Avada Builder and Avada Core or Aveda. Sorry, I'm getting the, if I'm getting the name wrong, let's deactivate those. And then let's go back to the page and see what happens. It's going to be exciting because I really don't know what this is going to look like. Okay, there we go again. It's not good. So a bit like a bit like Divi, we have just got a whole bunch of short codes. So it's pretty unusable to be honest. I'm not sure what I'd do with this. I'd probably just rebuild the page from scratch. There may be plugins out there that you can scrape some of the content out, but fundamentally we're stuffed. Right, so let's move on to the next one. Right, on this test, we're gonna take a Gutenberg-based plugin, which is stackable, and we're gonna deactivate that. This is the page I've built weekly. Now it's not the most beautiful page in the world. I've just brought in a whole bunch of elements. And let's just look at the edit screen so we can just check out the blocks we're using here. So these are the blocks. You see the majority of them are actually specialist stackable blocks. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when we actually deactivate the stackable plugin to the content. Let's go and check that out now. And deactivate the plugin. Let's go to plugins down here. Here it is, let's just deactivate that. Let's go back to the page, let's see what's gonna happen. And actually, okay, that's interesting. So it's tiled these photos. We've still got some text. That looks pretty good, actually. And that, we've, we've dropped some formatting. So let's go and see what's left over in terms of the blocks that we've got. So it's actually saying it's kept some as HTML here. So we can actually keep those. And if we look at the blocks, it's just created a whole bunch of unsupported blocks. So we've still got some issues. Some of the formatting is broken, but we can probably resolve some of these issues by going through and taking the content out. But it's still a, it's still an issue, deactivating the plugin 
has obviously caused some formatting issues, which you would expect. Right, just to wrap things up, I've got five conclusions and recommendations for you to avoid, to help you avoid content lock-in. So number one, Divi and Aveda are the worst culprits for content lock-in. So these these themes and plugins are fine to use if you never want to move away from them. So the, the problem comes with content lock-in is if you want to move away from the Divi theme, it means all that hard work you put into creating those pages is essentially lost and you have to rebuild them from scratch. So if you're never going to move away from Divi, it's fine, carry on using it, and it's a great theme for that purpose. But it does lock you into their ecosystem. So it's a, it's a big consideration in terms of your ongoing planning. Number two, Elementor also locks your content in, but at least if you do deactivate the Elementor plugin, it doesn't get wrapped in these horrible shortcodes. So it's better than Divi or Aveda. Still not perfect, but it's better than those two. Number three, I think this is a really key one. I would never use Divi Builder, Fusion Builder, or Elementor to create your post content, especially if you're creating you know, hundreds of posts on your site. It means all those posts are now locked into Elementor. So if you ever do need to move away from Elementor, essentially you'll have to go through all that content. So my recommendation is fine to use Elementor for pages, but I would never ever consider using it for posts. Number four, ideally, where possible, use the WordPress block editor, Gutenberg, to avoid content lock-in. That's your cleanest path to, re to re reduce your ongoing technical debt on your website. It's not always possible, so it's not in every situation. I'm not talking about doing this for every situation, but that gives you the cleanest future-proofing of your content. Number five, and I see this a lot, if you are using Gutenberg, it's often possible to avoid using third-party blocks just with a bit of training, knowledge, and imagination. For example, I see a lot of people that are using specific call to action blocks from third party libraries. And actually you can create a really great call to action just using the media and text block or the uh, Collins block. And I'll put a link in the description below to some tutorials that I've done that show you how to do that. So actually you're just using core Gutenberg, which is the ideal situation really, if you're trying to avoid content locking and future proofing your website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you did, if you can hit the like button down below now, that would be amazing because it really helps spread the word of the channel. And also, every time you do hit the like button, our cats get a little treat. So thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos around the Gutenberg Block Editor, hit subscribe now. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.